Well, good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to see and welcome everyone here today and welcome you to El Centro de la Raza, which translates into the Center for People of All Races, and also welcoming you to the beautiful Plaza Roberto Maestas that was community inspired. Today's press conference, April 1st, marks one year exactly before carrying out the 2020 census. Today is National Census Day of Action across the country. The census is an American tradition since 1790, and it rests totally on the people's readiness to take part in being counted and understanding that the census is not about counting citizens, but about counting every person. It is the job of our elected leaders, nonprofit, labor, business, and faith leaders to, to keep our communities updated, informed, and encouraging everyone to complete the responses, response forms. We need to continually remind our peoples of what is at risk when you don't complete your census form. Not being counted means less federal funds, that the state and local leaders use to provide vital services like health care, education, housing, and those who will be seriously threatened will be those living in poverty and communities of color. We need good census data to apportion congressional representation, to draw federal, state, and local legislative districts for fair political representation at every level of government. To our Latino community and all immigrant communities, know that we will not be deterred by the current administration. There are so many of us who are fighting back and you have many allies from all sectors of the community. We will not stand by and have you intimidated into not carrying out your constitutional responsibility to participate in the census and be counted. We have learned over the last two years when we mobilize and organize our collective power, we can transform our communities for a better future for all. Today is our call to action to protect all of our communities because the United States is meant to be a country where every single person counts. Now it is my honor to turn over the podium to King County Executive Dow Constantine. Thank you so much, Estella. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I am, uh, I'm thrilled to be here today uh, as part of an act of community building and an act, uh, in many ways, of defiance uh, by our region against what's going on in Washington, D.C. Uh, I am so grateful to see so many here today uh, who are going to support our effort to make sure every person is counted. The guiding principle, the entire premise of democracy is that all people have a voice. Well, even though that principle, like so many others in America today, is at risk or plainly under direct attack by the White House, we stand by that principle. We are here today as a result of our partnership with you, with those in the communities we serve. We are exactly one year from Census Day 2020. And I have to say the power of partnerships in getting us to that day cannot be underestimated. We're filling out a coordinated regional framework to align census efforts from our regional complete count committee to Seattle's census task force. From Washington State's complete count committee to a table now forming in East King County, to tables in Snohomish and Pierce and other counties and a table forming now in South King County. In preparing for the 2020 census, we have taken the notion of partnership, of collective impact to an entirely new level. The stakes are high. This administration, uh, its actions uh, to set the 2020 census up for failure are abhorrent. 
uh, be it the proposed addition of a citizenship question abandoned some 70 years ago, or the deliberate attempts to underfund and thus undermine the Bureau. In, 26, in fact, some of you will recall we stood here at El Centro uh, in the old building just a year ago this past week to decry the administration's attempt to inject that citizenship question into the census and to frighten people into not participating and being counted. Well, in 2016, census data helped direct over $16 billion, billion dollars, to the state of Washington, about $2,321 per resident. A substantial undercount would decrease federal and, in turn, state funding on which we rely. This would diminish our ability to provide services that improve the health and safety for everyone in our community. Additionally, census data will determine, as Stella said, how many U.S. representatives each state will have in the House. An undercount in a growing state like Washington would give the people of Washington a smaller voice in national affairs. An undercount would further isolate those who came to our country seeking the American promise that we are a nation of hope and freedom and opportunity. Well, here in King County, our partners in community and in government made the decision that we are not going to stand idly by, and that is why we are here today. Today, I'm proud to be here with Mayor Durkin. I'm proud to be here with Tony Mestres of the Seattle Foundation to announce the creation of the Regional Census Fund. King County, the City of Seattle, and the Seattle Foundation are partnering to offer a combined $1 million in competitive funding to community-based organizations to help them reach people who have historically been undercounted. With a $500,000 investment from the Seattle Foundation, with $250,000 each from the City of Seattle and from King County, we will help empower trusted messengers and organizations to ensure complete, accurate count in communities throughout the nation's 13th largest county. We're applying the same approach that made King <coughs> County one of the best affordable care success stories in America, cutting the uninsured rate by more than half. It's the same approach that we used in, in signing up people for low-income bus fare and in preventing families and children by the thousands from falling into homelessness. By partnering with organizations that have earned the trust of communities that are hardest to reach, including immigrants and refugees, people of color, people who identify as LGBTQ, people who are experiencing homelessness, and others. We will reach people who have been historically underserved and undercounted. This is the type of combined effort that demonstrates our strong commitment as a welcoming, inclusive community where all people have the opportunity to thrive. I'm honored to be joined by Mayor Durkin and by Tony Mestres, President and CEO of the Seattle Foundation, who've demonstrated outstanding leadership in this community-wide effort. They understand for us to succeed in this community-driven alliance, we have to apply a region-wide approach, <coughs> that one that reflects how communities in King County are really interconnected across these arbitrary jurisdictional lines. Now, I'm certain there are members present of the varying census complete count committees uh, and task forces that I mentioned earlier, including former Commerce Secretary, the person who was in charge of the successful 2010 census, Governor Gary Locke. If you're a member of one of those committees, will you please stand or raise your hand and be recognized? Thank you for your work. Yeah. And we're going to continue to work with those in our region who want to join in this effort. We also want to continue coordinating with other counties as well as with the efforts underway statewide. Together, as one region, we are sending a strong united message to all people who call this remarkable place home. You belong here. Whether you've been here for generations or whether you've just arrived, you count and you should be counted. Whatever inspired you to come here, we want you to have the opportunity to achieve your full potential.
And that starts with making sure you have a voice in the place you call home. I want, again want to thank Mayor Durkin and Tony Mestres for their partnership in this effort. And now here's Tony to talk a little more about the fund. Tony. I want to thank Executive Constantine and Mayor Durkin for their leadership on this issue. I also, as the community's foundation, Seattle Foundation is proud to lead the Regional Census Fund and partner with the county and the city. Seattle Foundation's commitment to full and fair census is based upon one fundamental principle, the importance of ensuring that everyone is counted and heard, especially those often excluded. An incomplete census jeopardizes critical work and decisions across every aspect of community life. Washington State has more than 1.6 million residents from historically hard to count communities and population groups. Nearly half of King County's growth in the last 10 years is from people born outside of the U.S. The Regional Census Fund will support organizations that have trust and relationships to be effective messengers and the, to the most vulnerable residents. With frontline partners, the Regional Census Fund will provide funding and technical support for education and outreach, focusing on hard to reach communities, including people of color, immigrants and refugees, Native Americans, LGBTQ people, among others. Seattle Foundation's goal is to ignite philanthropic support for this important effort. And we invite philanthropists to join us from across the region and the country to support the Regional Census Fund. Applications will be available on March, excuse me, on April 15th at the Seattle Foundation website, and funds will be distributed in early summer. There's a decade's worth of data, decision making, and democracy at stake. We have to invest in ensuring a fair and accurate account, inclusive of all who live in King County. Now, please join me in welcoming Seattle Mayor Jer uh, Jenny Durkin. Mayor Durkin. Well, good afternoon. It is really great to be here today, and Estella, thank you for your hospitality, and I cannot think of a better place to have this. There's very few places in the city of Seattle that reflect what happens when community stands for itself, comes together, and demands its voice be heard than here at El Centro de la Raza. I mean, from the group of activists, Estella and Roberto and others, who took a school thinking they could do better. Now we have a plaza and housing and a center of, for community um, throughout Seattle. So thank you, Estella. I also want to call out uh, council members Teresa Mosqueda and Lorena Gonzalez on this and other issues of equity have been outstanding. And we literally would not be where we were if they did not help us organize with community and community voices. Our country is still grappling with his, the history of exclusion and systemic racism. We know it's true. We know that people deliberately have not been counted, have been undercounted, and even have not been counted as a whole person in the history of our country. That base instinct is exactly what has driven our president to take the stance he has for this census, to purposely exclude and undercount people. Let us be clear, we know who he wants to undercount. People of color, the LGBT community, immigrants and refugees. We have to make sure that doesn't happen. As has already been noted is the census count requires that everybody be counted because everybody counts. And that count has some fundamentally important things to it. Number one, it's a recognition that people actually do count. Second, the federal government uses those counts to determine what part of our tax dollars come back to us so that we can support programs like SNAP, rapid rehousing, Medicaid, and the like. It's also used to determine what voice we have in Washington, D.C. We know that we are one of the fastest growing cities and regions in America right now. It is likely that we're entitled to another congressional seat, another voice in Washington to make sure the values of this Washington can become dominant in that Washington. 
but if people are not counted, that can all be jeopardized. We know that communities of color and those who have been purposely excluded distrust government, and for good reason. That's why this fund is so important, because we know in the city of Seattle that to get this right, we have to empower our community partners. This has to be community-based and community-led. There has to be trust for people to come forward and agree to be counted. I'm really proud of Seattle for putting the structures in place to move forward, to know that a year out we have so much work to do, to understand that government cannot necessarily lead, that we have to let community lead. And I'm really very, very um, enthusiastic about the possibilities of getting this right. I know that we can strengthen the laws and protections we have at the city of Seattle. Uh, Council Member Gonzalez and I worked very hard, for example, to make sure that the city of Seattle did not improperly divulge someone's citizenship status or allow that information to be collected improperly. We know that privacy and concerns of privacy is a real concern for people in communities, but they will learn and trust their partners before they will trust governments. Working together, I know that we can reach those historically undercounted people. That would include communities of color, our immigrants and refugees, our neighbors experiencing homelessness, people with disabilities, children, LGBTQ, the native communities, and renters. Renters are historically undercounted for many reasons, largely because, and in this market we know it's true, things have become so unaffordable, people move from place to place and often are not counted. We need to do better, and I th wanna thank everyone, particularly our partners here, for the work they've done and committed to doing and for all the work I know they're going to be doing. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Cherry and Oscar from the Washington Census Alliance, and they're gonna tell you a little bit more about how we're going to build this through community, and then they will be introducing our partner who I wanna thank, and that is Governor Locke. I'm not sure ever to call him whether governor, ambassador, secretary, or just awesomeness. I get the microphone here. Um, good morning, buenos dias. Uh, my name is Oscar Zambrano. I am the director of Civic Engagement Advocacy for Latino Community Fund. The sense of very important issues to all communities for the stakes that you have heard here today. Uh, it's no secret that uh, the census has been under attack by the current administration. In earlier last year, uh, when the citizenship question was added, uh, Latino Community Fund, along with MALDEF and other 21 entities across the state, we entered into a, a lawsuit to make sure that the citizenship question was challenged in the courts. I'm glad to say that that has been successful so far, and we're actually heading to the Supreme Court to make a final decision. So we encourage all of your prayers and also all your support. One of the main missions for Latino Community Fund is to build local and statewide resources so that we can bridge the equity gap in our communities. This is why Latino Community Fund is proud to be the fiscal sponsor for the Washington Census Alliance. The Alliance, you ask, what is the Alliance? Many of you, we, we have heard to you today that uh, we want to trust uh, the trusted messengers to uh, talk about this issue. And who are the trusted messengers? Those are your community groups, your local resources, your nannies, your uh, students, your teachers. And how do we get that information out to them? Is through building a coalition. The, the community, uh, the Washington Census Alliance, the coalition of organizations serving communities of color, but also those, those uh, impacted by this issue. This historic collaboration is focused on educating and engaging our communities for a safer, fair, and complete 2020 census count. In early February, the Alliance convened over 100 uh, leaders of color throughout the state and 67 organizations to build relationships, real, profound community relationships. Set overall a framework and start to build our regional 2020 complete census count strategy. This is why we are currently successfully advocating for $50 million in state funding to support our local work. We also wanna thank the local philanthropy and state philanthropies uh, with partnerships with government to be able to make this possible. So why does the census matter to us? There are two key reasons why we are heavily invested to have a safe and complete 2020 census count. First, the census drives the allocation of important federal resources, as you all have heard. Almost 17 billion in education, healthcare, and transportation funds are granted to Washington State, based solely on the last 20, uh, 2010 census count. 
These funds represent critical resources to support the basic needs and infrastructures on which our communities depend. Those are our schools, our hospitals, and other support. The second reason is political representation. Under a federal constitution, the census is required to re reapportion congressional districts. And we know that uh, this, the, the population in Washington has been growing, as we all ca can feel it here in Seattle, but also in central Washington, in Spokane, and other regions due to migrant workers that are traveling from other states to come and work here and make this economy a stronger one. So now, we're asking the, your collaboration, especially in the community, to come join the Census Alliance and be a larger one so we can have stronger voices together because there are power in numbers. And so with that, I would like to introduce my colleague, Cherry Kayayab, that will share you more about the efforts and successes we've had. Thank you. Hi, I'm Cherry Kayabiab, and I represent the Washington Census Alliance. And um, I want to thank the city of Seattle, King County, and the Seattle Foundation um, in uh, being able to join you in the launch of the Regional, Equity, Regional Census Equity Fund. So thank you. Um, in 2018, several community of color-led groups formed the Washington Census Alliance out of the concern that our communities of color are often undercounted and underrepresented in the census, as we all have said, which is magnified by the current social political climate of fear and distrust and the general lack of federal support and investment in the census. Because of these issues, we know that the immense task of ensuring we are safely counted will fall on us, on our communities, and our trusted messengers. Thus, our work and mission as an alliance has been to build our community's capacity to work on and advocate for the safe and fully informed participation of our historically undercounted communities in the Census 2020 through community organizing, policy advocacy, and providing training and technical assistance with our communities and allies. We have been working closely with the state philanthropy and local governments, so in particular the city, King County, and Seattle Foundation on advocating, advising, and monitoring that census funding and resources are funneled into our directly impacted communities. We are appreciative that the city, the county, and Seattle Foundation have engaged in this streamlined, coordinated effort to grant funds to community so that we can begin to do our work. We invite other municipalities and philanthropy across the state to engage in a similar model. Uh, we have also been advocating at the state level for additional funding and resources, as Oscar alluded to. We are succeed succeeding in our work so far um, in that we received good news as of last Friday that the state Senate put forth our proposal of $15 million to fund the census in their budget. <laughs> So we are at this point working and inviting all Washingtonians to join us to ensure that we secure that $15 million towards statewide census participation as the state finalizes their budget. So let's work together to secure that $15 million for our state and ensure our historically undercounted communities safely and accurately participate when the census count begins one year from now on April 1st, 2020. So with that, um, I have the honor of introducing Governor Gary Locke, um, again, the former uh, Secretary of Commerce uh, that led the successful Census 2010 count, and uh, also our state for the, or excuse me, our chair for the Washington Complete Count Committee. Well, thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here at uh, El Centro. I want to thank uh, Stella for inviting us and uh, hosting this. I have to tell you that I went to elementary school at the old Beacon Hill Elementary School, and it's great to see what you've done to this entire uh, area and with this beautiful plaza. Uh, I'm very disappointed that my successor uh, at the Department of Commerce has proposed that we include this citizenship question. Uh, as we've heard from many other speakers, that this really is an initiative of the White House, and it is designed simply to discourage uh, people of color, immigrants, uh, and uh, people from the urban areas from being counted. This is a constitutional requirement that we have a count of all the people living in America every 10 years, and it started in 1790 under President George Washington. And for 
The last 70 years, we have not asked a citizenship question. It is not necessary to have a citizenship question on the census every 10 years because the Commerce Department is able to collect that information from other surveys that it conducts every single year. So why have the citizenship question now? It's blatantly, bait, uh, blatantly clear that this administration, as was brought out in the lawsuit, wishes to suppress the number of people participating in the census. And why does it matter? Why does it matter? Because people who are hard to serve are the actual beneficiaries and the primary beneficiaries of the funds that would flow from an accurate census. As we've heard, almost $17 billion in the last several years has been coming to the state of Washington based on the 2010 census. That's over uh, $2,300 per person. And it goes into programs that, in fact, would directly benefit those people who are hard to count the homeless, low-income, immigrants, LGBT communities, and the list goes on and on, and people in the urban areas. Programs like food stamps, low-income housing, uh, Medicaid, uh, child nutrition programs, and the list goes on. The very communities that are traditionally harder to count are the main beneficiaries of the money that would come from an accurate 2020 census. In 2010, we were faced in the United States government with a troubled 2010 census. It was projected to be very difficult. Uh, President Obama inherited a mess, and we at the Commerce Department that I led was responsible for the conduct and the implementation of the census. I have to tell you that we were able to reverse a several decade long trend of people not responding to the census, not mailing back the census form. Uh, and in 2010, not only did we reverse that and have one of the highest participation uh, rates uh, in recent decades, but we also had one of the most accurate uh, censuses uh, ever conducted. The key to that was using trusted partners, people in the community, faith-based leaders, leaders of social and civic organizations that the people, the communities respected. There's always suspicion toward the government, whether it's the city, the county, the state, the federal government. The key to our success in 2010 was reaching out to community groups, leaders of people's communities. And that's why this regional census fund is so important, and that's why I have to simply laud and commend the Seattle Foundation, the City of Seattle, and King County for stepping up and creating this $1 million fund that will be eligible for community-based groups to get the word out to the members of their community, the people they serve, on the importance of this census. Trying to count the homeless, trying to count immigrants in this time of fear, trying to count people of color in this time of fear is going to be even more difficult because this year people will, be, will have the opportunity to respond to the census using the Internet. Now, a lot of these hard-to-count communities don't have access to the Internet. And so trying to get the word out, creating new systems by which organizations can help these individuals submit their responses over the Internet or by mail is more important than ever before. And again, so much is at stake. It's not only the dollars from the federal government and even from the state that will serve these communities, but it's based on an accurate count. And it's also about political representation. If we're concerned about the issues that affect us, we need more voices in the United States Congress. And Washington State stands to gain an extra seat in the United States Congress, giving us more power, more representation, making sure that our voices and our issues are heard. But that can only happen if we have a complete and accurate count. And that's why the Regional Census Fund is so important. That's why having all these community partners and representatives of different complete count committees, whether from Seattle, King County, Eastern Washington, statewide, is so important. And I want to thank everyone for their great efforts. Thank you very much.
So that uh, that wraps up our list of speakers. I think any of us would be happy to take any questions that you might have. Oh, right, and then we have to sign. Are you ready for the yeah, signing sign. part then? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Legal, there's three copies. <laughs> <laughs> it's official.